As you've probably figured out by now, partial sums can be very tedious to compute. Uh, as you know, a, a partial sum looks like this. If you have a summation from 1 to n of a sub i, then what you're doing is you're starting at a sub 1, you're starting at this number, and you're adding every term in the sequence until you get to this number. So you have a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 uh, plus dot 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 until you get to a sub n. Now as long as n is small, we can do these by hand you know, up to, you know, this a sub 5, you know, that you're adding up to, that's fine. And these guys create a, actually a sequence of partial sums. We call this capital S sub n. So like I said, if n is relatively small, these S sub n's are, are pretty straightforward to find. But if they're much larger, then we might need to look at how we can do these on a calculator. And I'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so let's say you have s sub n, for example, equals the sum 1 to n of 1 over 2 to the i. So this is a, a pretty typical partial sum. Uh, if you wanted s sub 1, you'd take just the first term. It's a half, very quick and easy. If you wanted s sub 2, then that's the sum of the first two terms, which is the uh, sum i equals uh, 1 to 2 of 1 over 2 to the i, so that's a half plus a fourth, gives you 3 fourths. Uh, s of 3, then that's the sum of the first three terms, a half plus a fourth plus an eighth. You do all that algebra, you get 7 eighths. But then, you know, beyond that, it's, it starts getting kind of hairy. All right, so what, what if somebody asks you for s sub 7? That's the sum of the first seven terms. Now, you could sit down with your calculator and do a half plus a fourth, plus an eighth, plus a sixteenth, plus a thirty-second, a sixty-fourth, and a one over one twenty-eight. You could do that manually by hand, but these are getting very uh, tedious, and much less if they wanted s sub one hundred, you know, or something like that. That would be almost impossible to do by hand. Well, it turns out we can do these guys on the calculator. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do these on the calculator. So I'm going to show you um, multiple ways and you pick whichever way is easiest for you. All right. So when you go into your calculator, the uh, quickest and easiest way I would recommend is a feature that not all calculators have. So if you have a newer software version of your TI, um, it likely has this feature. If you go to uh, second catalog, Second catalog has a list of every operation that's in your calculator. If you go down to the S's, you're going to be looking for summation. Summation. Uh, if you go up to the S's, sure enough, you see one of these is summation. Now, if you have an older style calculator, you probably don't have this feature, and that's okay. There's another way I'm going to show you in just a minute. But um, if you have this, man, this is so, so quick and fast. Uh, if you push enter, you see it brings up a summation, right? Even symbolically looks like what you want it to look like with the sigma notation and everything. And you just literally type it in verbatim, just being careful with your um, letters choices and that sort of thing. So you see it wants a letter here. So we'll say, um, I, we'll just use I, for example. You don't have to use an I, but, but we will. We'll say I equals... Uh, 1 to 7, let's say we want to add up the first 7 terms, of 1 divided by 2 raised to the ith power. So you have to go back and put in that let the same letter that you used before in your exponent. So we'll go alpha i, and you have to use alpha to make sure that you're getting the letter, um, not, not something else. So this is identical to what I had on my previous sheet. You push enter. And it looks like this summation, bam, is 0.9921875. That would have taken us a long time to do by hand, but boy, that was that was really fast. Okay, now now what about for everybody else who has those older style calculators that doesn't have this type of uh, symbolic summation? Well, there's another way you guys can do this. Uh, if you go to second stat, second stat, and go to the third column. This is a math co column that has a bunch of operations. We want the summation operation, number five. So if you click number five, this is gonna add something. But what, what do summations add up? They add up terms of a sequence. So now we have to go tell it what sequence we want it to add up. If you go back to second stat and go to the second column, 
you look halfway down that list, there's SEQ. SEQ is a sequence. And then now we just have to manually hand type the sequence. So the sequence is one divided by, um, what, what, it's sometimes a little bit um, easier here to use the um, variable notation like uh, x t theta n will do one over two to the n, or two raised to the n rather. Okay, and uh, this is going to be a function of n. Okay, so you also have to put comma n. So one over two to the n is a function of n. Comma one comma seven. Now these two you can probably guess why you need this in the syntax. Um, this is a sequence one over two to the n, is, which is a function of n. We're going to add up the terms from one to seven. And those are all somewhat intuitive, like we probably could have guessed that it needed that. The last term, however, is a little weird. Uh, you also have to put comma one. And for you, you'll almost always put comma one. Now, what's that last random number doing? This is telling it how far it's supposed to step to the right with every term in the sum. Obviously, we're gonna go from one to two, and from two to three, and from three to four, and four to five, five to six, six to seven, stepping to the right one unit every time. But you know, just hypothetically, if you change this number to a two, and maybe you can try this, maybe you can play around with it, it'll add up every second number in the sum. So the first term, the third term, the fifth term, the seventh term, but we don't wanna do that. We want every term. So we'll uh, just leave that last one a one. All right, push enter. And you notice these answers come up the same. So uh, whether you have a newer style calculator that can do it symbolically, or you have to do it kind of the good old fashioned way with uh, something that looks a little bit more like code, uh, either way you can do partial sums relatively easily on a calculator.